Hello, my name is Paul Pao, Tech of Juniper Network Certification Program with Education Service Department. Today, I would like to talk about some case studies of OSPF troubleshooting. Now, let's take a look at our first case. OSPF adjacency doesn't come up. Well, let's do some basic troubleshooting here. The neighbor is down. Let's take a look at the interface config. Let's ping the remote end. Okay, the IP connectivity appears to be fine. Let's check the OSPF config. The OSPF config looks normal too. Let's add some relevant trace option for our investigation. Let's specify the farm name as OSPF. So we monitor hello packets. Also we monitor the error message or error packet. So we may want to add the event and stage as well. Okay. Let's take a look at the log file. Okay, from the log, we can see there's an authentication type in smash here. But we don't see much detail here. Let's enter the useful command to collect more information. So this is really a nice feature of journals to capture packet details across the wire. Okay, here from the in direction that's receiving, we are seeing authentication type symbol. But in our out sending out direction, we are using authentication type none so that's a mismatch so since it's a simple test password we can even see the password here which is jmpr okay so that's one thing on the other hand we found out there's some um, mismatch in the hello interval you see we are receiving hello timer x seconds but we are sending out at 10 seconds here okay so let's uh, make the two changes to match with the remote end Hello interval X and um, authentication simple password JNP. Okay, so 
let's um, verify the adjacency. Okay, it's good. It's, it's up and running now. So the mismatch has been fixed. So in summary, the following OSPF parameters must match on both ends. They are error ID, authentication parameters, subnet, I mean subnet mask, hello and dead intervals, and the stub flags. Okay, now let's take a look at our at the case suboptimum path. So when we try to do a trace file from R1 to the loopback of R6, so we are seeing one, two, three, four, four hops. Let's look at the diagram. So we are going through R2, R3, R5 to R6 which is a suboptimum path with four hops and the matching is 5 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 which is 14 but actually there's a better path for R2 and R4 to R6 and the matching is 5 plus 2 plus 6 which is 13 with three hops and uh, with a lower metric So let me elaborate on the topology here as well. So the green links represent OSPF is running on those links. Similarly, orange links represent ISIS here. So route redistribution occurs on R5 and R4. So ISIS route are redistributed into OSPF at R5 and R4 to OSPF and vice versa. Also the metric or course is shown next to each link here. Okay, let's figure out why it's taking the suboptimum path. Let's check the route on R1 ok the matrix is 6 which is not our expected result let's take a look at the OSPF database Okay, here we see the type is type 2 external wall, which is the default behavior for OSPF redistribution. It explains why the match is 6, which is um, one, 5 plus 1. 5 is the course between R5 and R6. 1 is the course of the loopback of R6. So in order to achieve optimum routing, type 1 external route should be used at the redistribution points. We need to modify the export policy to generate type 1 external route when routes are redistributed from ISIS into OSPF. Ok, let's make the changes on R4 and R5. So let's look at the export policy. Let's change it to generate type 1 external while. Okay. Let's do the same thing on R5. C 
similar conflict. So we just need to change the export policy to generate type one external one. Well. So once it's commit, let's verify the route on R1 again. Check the database first. Okay, good, it's type 1. Here you see external type 1. And let's verify the route. Okay, now it's showing 14, which looks good. 14 means 13 plus 1. Let's do a trace well. Okay, good. It takes three hops. Let's look at the diagram. Okay, right now it's taking the optimum path through R2, R4 to R6. And the match is 5 plus 2 plus 6, which is 13 plus 1, the loop of R6. This concludes the OSPF case studies. Thanks for watching. Hope you find the information useful for you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.